Welcome to D-Lab. On the bench today I have a Hilgen Troubadour model T1506 guitar amplifier that I'm repairing. This one runs a pair of 6BQ5s. Currently it's not operational. So let's take a look at it and then we'll go through the troubleshooting steps and get her going. So first off, let's give it a look over. So here she is. We'll sweep across the front. You can see it's pretty basic. You've got volume, tone, and tremolo circuit. It all looks original except for that CE distribution filter cap has been changed. Let's take a look around the back. Scanning the back of the amp, there's power transformer, filter cap, 5Y3 rectifier, output transformer, pair of 6BQ5s. This here is a 12AU7 and this is a 12AX7. Now, I saw something that kind of was alarming. If you look here, it looks like somebody identified this tube as the EL84 in its past and said that was a 12AX7. And then over here, they said that was a 12AU7. Well, that's not right. So my guess is, is that these tubes were probably installed incorrectly in the past. So first step, let's check the tubes. To check the tubes, I'm going to utilize my B&K model 747. This is a dynamic tube checker. You can pick these up for about 200 bucks, and they'll test about any guitar type amplifier tube. 12AX7 is installed right now in socket 29. Now I've already noticed the filaments are not coming on. She's dead. But for the heck of it, we'll hit the test. Nothing. She's hacked. All right. Let's move on to the 12AU7. So there's a 12AU7 in his position, and once again, no filaments. So it's going to be a dead tube. Okay. Nothing. Dead or a doornail. Let's check those uh, 6BQ5s. Here's the 6BQ5s. First one's installed. Filaments on, and she measures good. Get that one out. We'll check our second one here. Hopefully it's okay. Give a little bit of warm up. Come on, tube. Here she comes. So she's warming up, and you can see the needle is going to swing right into good like the other one. I figured these were okay because they are replacements, um, and it doesn't look as though they've been used or hurt. So we'll keep those and change the other two tubes. So to eliminate this problem from happening again, I'm going to take some lacquer thinner, clean off those old identifications, and then I'm going to install new labels so the right tubes go in the right spots in the future. So I've got the new tubes installed, but before I fire it up, let's verify bottom side that everything's okay. All right. You can see here this filament line has a pretty nasty connection. I'm going to have to clean that up. Filter cap's been changed. Couple new resistor rates there. Here's your 5Y3, it looks fine. Now here's the first 6BQ5, and there's arcing right here on the chassis. There's some evidence of that. And there's also some pretty crummy wiring here on which appears to be the high voltage leads. So I'm going to make sure nothing here could cause a short or bring her up on a bariac. Visually, it appears as though the amp will be okay to turn on. So I'm going to do that using a bariac as usual. Now here's the schematic which I found online for free. Very nice detailed schematic. I'd suggest that you review that if you're going to work on one of these things. I've got the audio test set ready, signal generator, and a dummy load. So here we go. Okay, new tubes are installed and I killed the lights so I can make sure all the filaments are on. All the tubes are nice and warm. Looking good so far. Got the audio test set sitting here with the audio generator as an input. Let's bring up the volume. And you can see we got output on the old watt meter. Let's take a look at the scope, see what it looks like on there. There she is. So it looks like the tube placement was the problem. However, I did notice that there's some capacitors underneath that need some attention as well as the wiring that I showed you that was kind of mangled up. So let's get all that cleaned up and we'll give it another test. 
So here's the items in immediate need of attention. You take a look at these little electrolytic caps. They're like 20 microfarads. The ends pretty much blown right out of them. So they're obviously bad. Got another one over here, which goes to the cathodes of the output tubes. Got to change that. And then we got to fix up this wiring up here. Got a lot of uh, bare conductors showing. Okay, so we're going to clean all that up. Try to clean some of this arcing off of the chassis. But it all looks okay other than that. I do not see damage to the tube pins. And then the other deal is, you go over here into the power distribution. This filament line is pretty crazy. I'm going to have to clean that up. And the power light is not wired. And the reason it's not wired is when it got here, it was actually wired to 120 volts. And it was blowing 6 volt bulbs. So I chopped that out before I ever turned it on. There's the three caps that have been changed. Two of them, which resided here. One of them here. And then I cleaned up that wiring on the tube socket. And yes, this has been changed. You can see the new screws here, whereas the old ones had pop rivets. Okay? So it was changed. They just didn't clean up all the arcing and sparking. right? And I've got the lamp wired in, and the power's kind of cleaned up. So, let's retest it. Alright, test after repair. You can see we've got the idiot light working. We're powered up. Normal channel. Bring up the volume. There's audio test set. Well over 10 watts of power. Take a look at the scope. Nice and clean. You vary the frequency. Turn on the old tremolo. Boing, 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 boing. And you can really turn up the intensity. And man, she goes nuts. Should have a nice deep tremolo circuit. So I believe the old Troubadour is ready to march on. So what does it sound like? We have a little bit of low level hum like you'd get on most amps without a choke. It's not bad at all. Got my Telecaster here. I'm actually trying to learn how to play for you guys, all right? So I believe I'm set up for an A chord. tune guitar. Well this is the first Hilgen amp that I've had in D-Lab so I was pretty excited to see it come in the door. As you can see it was a pretty straightforward repair. However the cause was more than likely because the chassis was not properly identified. So I'm going to do that before I allow it to go back to the owner. I hope you enjoyed this repair and I'm sure there will be more cool vintage amps to come. We'll see you again.